Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, would you ask Buzz to check his biomedical PM sensors for a loose or a dried out sensor? We're getting uh, erratic electrocardiogram readings. That would be one of the three sentinel leads, over. Houston, say again your last place. Disregard. Roger that. This is Apollo Control at 148 hours, 7 minutes. In about 24 seconds from now, the spacecraft will pass the imaginary line into the Earth's sphere of influence. Stand by for a mark leaving the lunar sphere of influence. Mark, you're leaving the lunar sphere of influence, over. Roger, is uh, Bill Shaffer down here? Uh, negative, but we've got uh, a highly qualified team on in his stead. Roger, I wanted to hear him explain it again at the press conference. Okay. That's an old Apollo 8 joke, but tell him the spacecraft gave a little jump as he went through the sphere. Okay, I'll pass it on to him. Thanks a lot, and Dave Reed is sort of burying his head in his arms right now. Roger that. Those guys down here in the train have been doing a pretty good job this place. Yes, they have. And we don't want them to give up yet, though. No, they'll hang in there for about another 47 hours or so.
The spacecraft is traveling at a speed of 3,994 feet per second with respect to the Earth. After uh, awakening this morning, Neil Armstrong reported all three crewmen uh, getting at least eight hours of sleep. The uh, commander uh, received uh, about, got about eight hours. Uh, the command module pilot, Mike Collins, about eight hours. And Armstrong reported that uh, lunar module pilot Buzz Aldrin got about eight and a half hours of sleep. Apollo 11, this is Houston. If you're not busy now, I can read you up the morning news. Say again, 11. Roger, we're all listening. Go ahead. Roger from the hot wires of the Public Affairs Office. Apollo 11 still dominates the news around the world. Only four nations, Communist China, North Korea, North Vietnam, and Albania, have not yet informed their citizens of your flight and landing on the moon. One newsman said that he has run out of ways to describe your success. Tonight, President Nixon is scheduled to watch the All-Star Baseball game in Washington. After the game, he will depart for the Pacific Recovery Area. Wednesday evening, he will fly from Johnston Island by helicopter to the Navy communications ship Arlington. Then on Thursday morning, he will reboard the helicopter and fly to the Hornet in time to witness your splashdown. Accompanying the President will be Secretary of, Secretary of State William Rogers, and Frank Borman. They will watch the splashdown from the bridge of the recovery ship with Admiral John Sidney McCain, Jr., commander of the Pacific Forces. And following the President's stay aboard the Hornet, he will depart for his tour of Asia and schedule a visit to Romania. Luna 15 is believed to have crashed into the Sea of Crises yesterday after orbiting the moon 52 times. The Soviet news agency TASS reported that, quote, Scientific research in near-moon space was carried out, unquote. Sir Bernard Lovell at Jodrell Bank Observatory said that Luna 15 hit the surface of the moon at a speed of about 300 miles per hour. Things have been relatively quiet recently in Vietnam. GIs on patrol were observed carrying transistor radios tuned into your flight. The Armed Forces radio and TV network in Vietnam gave the mission full coverage. Skirmishes still continue between the Egyptians and Israelis along the Suez Canal. UN observers there are trying to halt the action. In Washington, the House Ways and Means Committee has voted to reduce the 27.5% oil depletion allowance to 20%. We've had rain several times here in the Houston area. Today it is cloudy and more showers are expected. On the sports front, as we mentioned earlier, the All-Star Game is tonight. There were no games played yesterday. Last night in New York, the Baseball Writers Association of America named Babe Ruth the greatest ball player of all time. Joe DiMaggio was named the greatest living ball player. Frank Borman made the announcement at a dinner honoring the players. Joe Namath put in a full day at the New York Jets training camp. Five policemen had a hard time restraining about 500 kids who wanted to touch Broadway Joe. He said he feels fine and will play in the All-Star game August 1 as Coach Webb Eubank let him. The Oilers camp at Kerrville got wet yesterday, but the workouts continued. There have been some minor injuries, but nothing too serious. Coach Wally Lem is satisfied so far with the workouts. The Oilers are expecting attendance by over 30,000 for the preseason game with Buffalo. Apparently, Don Meredith's retirement isn't expected to dampen enthusiasm, especially around here in Houston. Mario Andretti won the 200-mile Trenton Auto Race Sunday and is now the leading race driver in the U.S. Auto Club point standings. And that's about the summary of the morning news this afternoon in Houston. Over. Well, pick up the Daniels Industrial Park. Roger, right, stand by a minute, please. Apollo 11.
Reverend Mrs. Houston. Uh, we see you in Pooh when you can give us accept. We have a uh, state vector and target load up link ready for you. Roger, Houston, uh, go ahead. You've got the computer. Roger, thank you. Apollo 11, we've completed the uplink. The computer's yours. Thank you. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, with respect to the Dow Jones Industrials, since closing on uh, Tuesday afternoon the 15th up to about uh, 1.05 p.m. Houston time this afternoon, why the effect has been a net drop that is minus six points on the industrial average, uh, so far today, since opening, the Dow Jones Industrial Average has gone down by 11.05 after rising one and a half shortly after opening. Uh, today's performance on the utilities is a drop of 1.63 and railroads a drop of 1.58. Over. Some speculation that you all were responsible for that one and a half point rise right after opening. Well, don't blame the 11 point drop on us anyway. Roger. This is Houston. If you have a minute or so free, I wonder if we could get Mike to give us a little bit of clarification on uh, what happened uh, around about the time of docking. We copied him uh, as mentioning that uh, contact was very smooth, almost imperceptible, and we're a little bit uh, inquisitive or curious about his remarks as to what happened after probe retraction. Over. Roger, I docked in uh, CMC Auto, and as I said, uh, I wasn't really sure of the moment of contact. I kept cross-checking uh, the docking probe indicators. I got two barber poles indicating that uh, the three capture uh, latches, or not capture latches, but the three uh, gizmatches had made, and we were soft docked. And at that time, the situation looked uh, very stable. So I went to CMC Free, glanced back out the window, it still looked stable, and I fired uh, primary two bottle. And uh, at that time, uh, a gyration began between the two vehicles due, I'm not sure to what, uh, perhaps uh, the limb thrusting, or perhaps uh, it was building up prior and I hadn't noticed it. But anyway, during the uh, retract of the probe, uh, there were uh, yaw, my yaw, excursions of, uh, I would guess, around uh, 15 degrees. And uh, I uh, had to come back on, uh, take the free switch and throw it back to auto and try to damp them out. And I guess Neil was doing the same in the lab. I'll let you tell him about his side of it. And uh, I thought that we were not going to get a successful uh, retract and, and hard dock. However, uh, in about, oh, I guess, six or eight seconds, uh, I did hear, uh, you could see the situation damping out, and then we heard uh, the noise indicating the docking latches had fired, and later on when I got in the tunnel, all 12 of them had properly engaged. Roger. And on the left side, we were uh, in uh, tag, in dead band at hold. Uh, at uh, contact, I thrust it uh, plus X, and shortly after that, uh, 
we had a sizable uh, attitude oscillation and thruster buried, so we opened up the dead band to max and uh, manually flew the vehicle into uh, stable attitude uh, during the retraction. Thank you very much, John. Apollo 11, this is Houston. I have your mid-course correction. Five fed available when you're ready to copy. Mid-course correction number five, RCS GNN, 26025, pitch and yaw trim NA, TIG 150-29-5453, minus 0048, plus all balls, plus 0001. <coughs> Zero seven five one five nine er three two eight H A is N A H P plus zero zero two three zero 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 four eight zero one one zero 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 four eight sextant star zero three zero nine er zero eight 382. Foresight star block, none available. Latitude, plus 1102. Minus 17204. 11803. 36275. 1905. 0333. GDC align, Deneb and Vega, 007-144-068. No LH, of course, four quad thrusting. Over, read back. Uh, Roger, mid course number five, RCS D and N, 26025. Pitch and yaw, NA, 150-29-5453, minus 00048, plus all zeros, plus 00001, 075-159-328, NA, plus 00230, Zero 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 four eight zero one one zero 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 four eight zero three zero nine or zero eight three eight two and a three times plus one one zero two minus one seven two zero four one one eight zero three. Three six two seven five one nine or five zero three 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 Dan Ab and Vega zero zero seven one four four zero six eight and four quads for the burn. Apollo eleven, this is Houston. Read back correct. Out This is Apollo Control at 148 hours, 58 minutes. 
the series of numbers passed up to the crew a few minutes ago was for mid-course correction number five. Uh, that is scheduled to occur at 150 hours, 29 minutes, 54 seconds. It will be a uh, reaction control system burn using the spacecraft reaction control system thrusters with a velocity change of 4.8 feet per second, and that will be uh, retrograde. Primary purpose of the... ...entry conditions, uh, which is would primarily be for corridor control, uh, controlling the flight path angle at uh, entry. And the current predicted splash time in the Pacific is uh, 195 hours, 17 minutes, 25 seconds. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 172,654 nautical miles from the Earth, traveling at a speed of 4,017 feet per second. We estimate that the spacecraft will be halfway home at a ground elapsed time of 159 hours, 53 minutes, 43 seconds. At that point, the uh, spacecraft will be 145,583 nautical miles from the Earth's surface, and uh, we'll have completed half of the return trip measured from uh, lunar orbit insertion to splashdown. Now, we also have uh, another figure that uh, would be for the time at which the spacecraft velocity is equal with respect to both the Earth and the Moon. At that point, uh, the velocity will be 4,300 feet per second with respect to both bodies. And we would devi define this as the uh, equal, pot equal potential point. That will occur at 155 hours, 30 minutes. And at that time, the spacecraft will be 156,874 nautical miles from the Earth, 52,543 nautical miles from the Moon. We're now 1 hour, 28 minutes, 26 seconds from ignition for the uh, mid-course correction 5 maneuver. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Roger, uh, Roger, if Neil uh, has a free minute, we've got a question or two regarding the CO2 partial pressure and water in the suit loop discrepancies noted yesterday, over. Go ahead. Roger, 11. Was water noted in both suits or only in yours, Neil? I think only in my suit. Okay, can you locate that occurrence for us uh, in time when you first noticed water in the suit, either by uh, mission time or relation to any particular event? first noticed it or was it sometime after when you called it? 
Uh, 11, this is Houston, over. Uh, Roger, I wonder if you noticed any change in the uh, biometric turn you're getting, over. Uh, negative, Buzz. It still looks kind of bad. Apparently, when you move around, it's cutting in and out. Have you checked the little electrical connector where it goes into the signal conditioner? Over. Uh, yes, they're all as bad as they can be. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll uh, take them off and put them back on again. Uh, okay, if you would, at your convenience, uh, we'll be watching it down here. This is Apollo Control at 150 hours, 4 minutes. Uh, telemetry data at this time shows the spacecraft in the proper attitude for the upcoming mid-course correction maneuver. The uh, crew will soon be uh, verifying their attitude by taking a sighting on a star through the sextant and then be running some... Uh, uh, tests on the guidance and control system and the reaction control system uh, before the maneuver takes place. So that burn now scheduled to come in a little over 25 minutes. Apollo 11 is now 170,102 nautical miles from the Earth and the spacecraft uh, velocity is 4,058 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We'd like you to try acquisition on the high gain antenna for us at pitch minus nine or zero. Yaw 270, over. Roger it. That can work. Roger out. Eleven, this is Houston. We're showing about six point eight percent on wastewater on our telemetry now over. Okay, got about nine up here, over. Roger out. Eleven Houston, we're standing by for your burn. Everything's looking good from down here. Thank you, Bruce. You got about a minute and twenty seconds. Roger, we can curb. One minute now until uh, mid course correction number five. That will be a ten point nine second burn of the spacecraft reaction control system thrusters. Uh, giving a change of velocity retrograde of 4.8 feet per second. The uh, primary purpose of this maneuver will be to uh, control the spacecraft uh, flight path angle at entry interface. We're now less than 30 seconds uh, from the uh, initiation of the burn. They should be burning at this time. And we sh show the burn off. Houston, you copy our residual? Roger, we've got your residual steel counter reading for us. Delta BC is plus point two. Roger, plus point two. That was actually plus one hundred point two. Okay. Okay. That mid course correction was performed uh, at a distance of about one hundred sixty nine thousand nautical miles from the Earth. The spacecraft velocity four thousand seventy five point six feet per second. This is Apollo Control at 150 hours, 35 minutes. Our uh, telemetry data here on the ground shows that uh, mid-course correction maneuver 
uh, just about nominal. Burn duration 10.5 uh, seconds. Prior to the maneuver, we were predicting a splashdown time of 195 hours, 17 minutes, 25 seconds. And we expect there will be some uh, modification to that after we've had a chance to do some tracking uh, following this mid-course correction maneuver. Apollo 11 is now 168,843 nautical miles from the Earth traveling at a speed of 4,078 feet per second. And we're continuing to see a very slow buildup in the velocity. Houston, Apollo 11. Go ahead, 11. Roger, we're uh, in PCC attitude, and would you please give us a call when our thruster activity has subsided sufficiently? Roger, stand by. Apollo 11, this is Houston. We're going to hand over from Madrid to Goldstone at 151 hours even. If you should lose lock on the high gain at this time, you may reacquire at pitch minus 45, yaw 270. Break, we're still watching your race, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, 11, we're still seeing rates on your spacecraft above those that we'd like for in a, a continuation of the PTC mode. We're still monitoring it, and we'll advise you when it's settled down, over. Okay. This is Apollo Control at uh, 151 hours, 11 minutes. The crew is presently setting up the spacecraft uh, for passive thermal control. And once it uh, stabilizes out, uh, it'll begin a slow roll rate of three revolutions per hour to maintain temperature control. At uh, the present time, Apollo 11 is 167,448 nautical miles from the Earth, and the velocity is 4,101 feet per second. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Your go for the spin up on PTC over. Thank you. Houston, Apollo 11, over. Go ahead, 11. Right, it didn't like it that time when I got down to uh, the entry 27303 enter. It took off and roll at a uh, high rate in excess of. Uh, of one degree per second over, so I've stopped it now and we're going to have to go back and do it over again. I'd like to try to find out the reason why I did that. All right, Roger, you might as well start setting up for it and we'll be working the problem here. Okay, do you have us on high bit right here now? That's affirmative. Okay, good. I'll maneuver back to... Uh, PTC initiation attitude while you guys uh, look at the data and see what you think. Roger. It's been Apollo 11. I, I think the reason is in having 1620 on the disky during the uh, subsequent entry. Or at least that's one possibility. Roger, we'll check it out. Yeah. 
Apollo 11, this is Houston. While you're waiting for the CSN to settle down and for us to look at the tapes on your latest maneuver, would you feel like answering some more questions with relation to the lunar surface? Over. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, Roger, for $64,000, we're still trying to work out the location of your landing site, Tranquility Base. We think it is located on LAM-2 chart at Juliet Decimal 5 and 7.8. Do you still have those charts on board? Over. Yeah, stand by when they're back. Uh, Roger, you may not have to unpack it. The uh, position which I just gave you is slightly west of West Crater. I guess it's uh, about two-tenths of a kilometer west of it. And we were wondering if uh, Neil or Buzz had observed any additional landmarks during descent lunar stay or ascent which would uh, confirm or disprove this. One thing that we were wondering about is that if you were at this position, you would have seen the cat's paw during ascent uh, just up to the north of your track. Over. Uh, we were uh, looking for the cat's paw too, uh, thinking we were probably downrange uh, beyond the big Z. Uh, but uh, I think that it's likely that that might have been West Crater that we went across in landing, but uh, stand by. We're uh, hoping, Bruce, that our 16-millimeter uh, uh, film was working uh, at that point in descent, and we'll be able to confirm our touchdown position. Uh, we thought that during ascent we might be able to uh, pick up uh, some recognizable objects close to the landing site, and we did see a number of small craters and crater rows and things like that, which we may be able to uh, pick out uh, after the fact, but we haven't been able to yet. Oh, Roger, and the next question from our panelist was Buzz. Uh, we recall that he reported seeing a laser upon AOS of the Earth the first time after, the first rev after ascent. And we're wondering what color the beam was and if he could determine its approximate location with respect to the Earth over. Uh, it was uh, mostly white, perhaps a tinge of uh, yellowish color to it. And uh, it seems to be, uh, as I recall it, uh, the terminator of the Earth was uh, toward the uh, horizon and uh, seemed to be about uh, a quarter to a third of the way down from down toward the uh, terminator of the Earth from the uh, opposite horizon. Uh, that's a third to a quarter Earth radii. Roger, and that puts it in the light side, or? Roger, yes, it was in the light side. The Earth was about uh, a two-thirds uh, lit Earth with the uh, Terminator down toward the horizon. And now coming from the opposite limb of the Earth, the uh, sunlit limb, coming down about... Uh, one quarter to one third of a radius in from the limb, generally uh, centrally located with respect to uh, a line drawn perpendicular to the terminator that goes through the center. Over. Roger, Buzz, we copy. And I got pictures of that. Uh, I'm sure that'll show up. And I saw I saw that too. It was a very bright uh, spot of light and I confirmed Buzz's observation of its position. 
Okay, 11, very good. Now, with respect to the documented sample container on television, it appeared to us as though uh, the samples for that container were, in fact, being uh, given, being selected in accordance with uh, some thought or consideration being given to the rocks themselves. And we were wondering if you could give any further details from memory about uh, any of these samples and the context of the uh, material or the surface from which they were taken. Over. Yes, uh, if you remember I initially started on the cut side of the limb that the TV camera was on, and I took a number of uh, samples of uh, uh, rocks on the surface and several that were just subsurface. That, uh, about uh, 20, 15 to 20 feet uh, north of the limb. And then I recalled that that area had been probably swept pretty well by the exhaust of the decent engine. So I crossed over to the southern side of the limb and uh, took a number of samples from the area around the uh, elongate double crater that we commented on and several beyond that and tried to take as many uh, different types uh, of rock types as I could see by eye uh, as I could in the short time we had available. There were a number of other uh, samples that I had seen earlier in our stroll around the lab that I had hoped to get back and pick up and put in the documented sample, but I didn't uh, get those and I'll be able to comment on those in detail when uh, we get in a debriefing session. Oh, Roger. Did you observe any small craters with conspicuously blocky rims? Over. Uh, well, aside from the real big one uh, that we went over, uh, I guess uh, there were none in our area. I uh, took a stroll back uh, after putting up the uh, piece of it while Buzz was uh, starting to unpack the documented sample. Took took a stroll back to a uh, crater behind us that was uh, maybe 70 or 80 feet in diameter and 15 or 20 feet deep, uh, and took some pictures of it. It had uh, rocks in the bottom of uh, pretty good size, uh, considerably bigger than any that were out on the surface, but there was no. We apparently, uh, at 15 feet or so, had not got below the regolith. We were uh, essentially showing no bedrock, at least in the walls of the crater, at uh, that depth. Or Roger, we copy. Okay, thank you, Neil. That about wraps up the questions we have on hand for now. My compliments to the chef. The food's outstanding. This cream and chicken soup, I give at least three spoons. Okay, cream of chicken, three spoons. Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. 11, we concur that having verb 16, noun 20 up on the disc, he may well have had some effect in your PTC initiation. It looks like this would uh, give, let the computer work with a knowledge of the actual CDU angles. What we'd like you to do is uh, do a CDU zero, which is verb four zero, noun two zero, enter, and then start the PTC procedure again at step two uh, with loading verb six, noun 22, desired attitude, and the auto maneuver and all that over. Okay, the only thing I don't understand about that is why it took off at the rate it did. What rate should it have taken off at under that theory? Stand by a minute, Mike. Hey, 11 CMP, this is Houston, over. Go 
ahead, Justin. Mike, over here on page 9-7 of your checklist where we're setting up PTC, there's been a note penciled in uh, after wait 20 minutes for rates to damp. Do not monitor verb 16, noun 20. It turns out that the significance of that is that if you are monitoring 16, noun 20, then when you get down here in step 7, the second time you do a verb 24, you've got to reload the noun 01 to make it verb 24, noun 01, enter before you load the three registers over. Roger that. I was just questioning the uh, rate at which the maneuver would begin uh, if that were not done. Uh, Roger, we're still working on computing the rate for you. Houston, we'd like you to select react mode on the high gain antenna. It looks like we're about to lose you. Over. This is Apollo Control at 152 hours, 9 minutes. At this time, the uh, crew is getting the spacecraft set up to reinitiate the passive thermal control. Uh, Apollo 11, currently 165,143 nautical miles from the Earth and uh, traveling at a speed of 4,142 feet per second. The flight plan has relatively few activities scheduled for now. Uh, through the beginning of the crew sleep period tonight. Uh, we do have a uh, television transmission uh, scheduled. I believe the time on that is a little after uh, 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And we show the uh, sleep period to begin at about 160 hours ground elapsed time, or a little less than eight hours from now. We'll continue to stand by for uh, any conversation with the crew. It has been uh, relatively quiet uh, for a good part of today. And we'll, uh, we'll stand by for a call from the uh, Capcom or from the spacecraft down to the ground. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston broadcasting in the blind. If you read us, attempt to acquire on Omni antennas. Attempt to acquire us on Omni antennas, if you read. This is Houston, out. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston broadcasting in the blind, if you read. Attempt acquisition on an Omni antenna. Attempt acquisition using an Omni antenna. Over. <laughs> Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston broadcasting in the blind. If you read, attempt contact using Omni antennas. Using an Omni antenna. This is Houston out. This is Apollo Control at 152 hours, 29 minutes. 
in the process of reestablishing the passive thermal control uh, with the spacecraft in a slow rotation. Uh, we have apparently lost uh, high gain lock on. Uh, we expect that uh, the crew will reacquire uh, lock with the antenna once the uh, passive thermal control is reestablished. At the present time, uh, Apollo 11 is 164,320 nautical miles from the Earth, and the velocity is up now to 4,156 feet per second. We'll continue to stand by here for uh, reacquisition of the spacecraft, for reestablishment uh, of high gain lock on. Apollo 11, Apollo 11. This is Houston broadcasting in the blind. If you read us, attempt acquisition using an omni antenna. Attempt acquisition using an omni antenna. This is Houston out. Big old phone. Apollo 11, this is Houston. How do you read? Over. Rod clear, Bruce. How many? Uh, Roger. What antenna are you using? changing shifts here in mission control. Uh, Flight Director uh, Gene Kranz will be coming on to uh, relieve uh, Flight Director Clifford Charlesworth. The capsule communicator on this shift will be astronaut Charlie Duke. There will be a change of shift briefing in the news center uh, in the uh, Building 1 auditorium in about uh, 10 minutes. At the present time, Apollo 11 is 
uh, traveling at a speed of 4,185 feet per second. The spacecraft is about 162,700 nautical miles from the Earth. During the change of shift briefing, we will take the uh, circuit down, record any conversation that develops with the spacecraft, and uh, play it back following the change of shift briefing. At uh, 153 hours, 9 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, 153 hours, 49 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 11, homeward bound, is now 161,050 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now 4,216 feet per second. Some three and a half minutes of uh, recorded air-to-ground transmissions have accumulated during the recent change of shift press conference here in the Apollo News Center. Let's uh, play that tape back now. Houston, Apollo 11. Go ahead, 11. Well, I'm just checking the radios, and uh, how's the thruster activity coming? 11 Houston, the radios are still in good shape, and we're still waiting for your rates to decay. We've got 0.03 degrees per second in pitch now. Okay, we're, we're in no rush. This is a very pleasant attitude. As a matter of fact, the uh, sun is down in the LEB, so it's not shining through the windows and heating the place up. Uh, We've got the Earth uh, steady out window one. We have the moon steadily out window three. And, uh, of course, we're locked up on a high gain. So as long as the thermal people are happy, we're happy. Roger, we copy. Uh, Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, 11, we're about ready to start PTC. I'd like to give you some high-gain antenna angles, though. We'd like to operate in the REACT mode, and do you plan on spinning up in the positive or negative direction, over? Uh, we can do it either way. I had planned the positive. Okay, for positive, the high-gain antenna setting should be pitch plus 3-0, yaw 270, and in REACT. Over. Understand. React. Pitch plus 30. Yaw 270. Thank you. Roger. And if you, you would, when you're making your disky entries to set up for PTC, uh, go a little slower, and we'll try to follow each entry from down here. Over. Roger that. Houston 11. PTC established. Roger 11. Eleven Houston, we observe the PTC to be fairly well established here, and uh, we'll keep you posted on how it's going. And your friendly white team commentator is taking over now. Okay, thank all you black team. That was the green team. Uh, correction, all you green team. Correction, green team. Excuse me. Roger out. How could I forget? I used to be a green one. Hello, Apollo 11 Houston. Your white team is now on. We're standing by for an exciting evening of TV and a free sleep report. Over. Else in there with you? Houston, Apollo 11, say again, please. 
Uh, we had some strange noises coming down on the downlink, and uh, sound like you had some friends up there. Where'd the white team go during their off hours, anyway? Just say again. This is Apollo Control. Still no explanation of the weird noises emanating from uh, Apollo 11. If indeed it is from Apollo 11, and it's reported from network that it's uh, being received on the downlink uh, at two different stations in the manned spaceflight network. Perhaps uh, it will all shake out later in the mission as to what these uh, strange noises are. We'll come back up again as conversation is resumed with Apollo 11. Now 160,410 nautical miles out from Earth, traveling at 4,228 feet per second. At 154 hours, 5 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 154 hours, 53 minutes, ground elapsed time, 40 hours, 9 minutes to entry. Apollo 11, homeward bound, uh, 158,378 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now, 4,267 feet per second. We have some three minutes of tape accumulated over the past half hour of uh, rather minor conversations with the crew of Apollo 11. We'll uh, roll these tapes now. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Uh, Roger, would you verify, we've lost calm with you for about the last uh, ten minutes. Would you verify that the uh, S-band track uh, switch is in uh, REAC, over? Uh, negative, it's not. Uh, last time we were clock, uh, we went to auto and I left it there. Sorry. All right, sir, we'd like to uh, have you to put it in react and uh, monitor in about two minutes. We'll be coming up on the high gain. Uh, would you monitor the uh, react if it doesn't take uh, acquire manually over? Okay, take any angles you'd like. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to switch it ourselves. Stand by on the angles. Uh, Buzz, the uh, it's pitch plus 30, y'all 270, over. Roger, right there, you got him. Thank you. Thanks. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Would you please uh, terminate uh, battery charge now, over? Roger, terminating battery charge. Hello, Apollo 11. 
Houston, uh, any special attitude you'd like us to look at uh, for the TV over? I don't guess we have a requirement there, uh, John. Roger, we have an attitude that we can get the Earth out of a window or the, the moon. We're trying to look at find one that we can get both if uh, that's what you'd like. Over. Uh, our 50 degree roll attitude will probably give us that, John. Roger. That's a good one because it puts the Earth out window one and the moon out window three and it puts the sun down the LEB so uh, the lighting in here remains relatively constant. Roger. Well, we'll just stop on the 50 roll then and we'll give you the word uh, when to do that over. Okay. This is Apollo Control, and that completes the accumulation of air-to-ground communications by means of tape recordings over the last half hour or so. It's quiet right now. No conversation going on between spacecraft communicator Charlie Duke and the crew of Apollo 11. And at 154 hours, 57 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 155 hours, 27 minutes, ground elapsed time. Coming up now about three minutes away from the uh, tonight's television pass. It'll be through the 85-foot antenna at the Goldstone tracking station. The 210-foot dish out there uh, is tied up tracking uh, one of the uh, Mars flyby missions. We have some 20 seconds of tape accumulated. We'll play that back and rejoin the conversation live. Apollo 11, Houston. We'll have uh, high gain coverage about 155.30. That time, you can uh, turn on a TV if you desire and continue your roll around till you get uh, 50 degrees roll. Over. Apollo 11, Houston, we're going to give you the all-star game tonight, but it was ringed out over here. Houston, we're on a high gain. You can warm up the FM there if you'd like. Over. This is Apollo Control, still standing by for the incoming television signal from Columbia. Still nothing but the uh, color bar test pattern as, as of now. Continuing to stand by on air, ground, and television links. Apollo 11, Houston, we see you coming up on 50 roll. How does that attitude look over? Apollo 11, Houston, we're ready for the... TV, we're all configured uh, at your convenience. Over. This is Apollo Control. While we're waiting for the television pictures to come in, we have in the control room here a vase full of long stemmed red roses and a card saying, To one and all concerned, job superbly done from a moonstruck Canadian. Continuing to stand by as we wait for the pictures to come from
Columbia. Here they come.
11 Houston. We have an excellent picture now. Over. Yeah, how do you read me, Charlie? Uh, five by now, Buzz. Over. Okay. Uh, more mundane affair. Now that we've left the moon, I'd like to uh, trace through a little bit for you. Development that has taken place in the uh, food department. I'm sure you've already type of a uh, drink container. Now, a little later, Mike will show you how the uh, water gun uh, operates with its new uh, filter to take out the uh, hydrogen. Essentially, this uh, water gun is put in, in this end and filled up this bag with water, and the uh, drink then uh, dissolves in the water, and uh, this end of the mouth feeding. Uh, likewise, we have uh, other foods that are more solid nature, you can probably see this uh, shrimp cocktail meal. This afternoon, while the two of us had uh, salmon salad. Another early development was the uh, use of bite sized food. 11, Houston, uh, Buzz, you're breaking up badly. Yeah, uh, uh, would, would you check your box over? Uh, Roger, how am I coming through now, Charlie? Uh, Roger, uh, you're very clear when you come through. It's just that your box is not uh, keying at uh, every word. Over. Okay. Well, these bite-sized uh, objects were designed to uh, uh, remove the problem of having so many crumbs floating around in the cabin. So they designed uh, a particular size that uh, would be able to uh, go into the mouth all at once. I think since uh, all of our experience, we've discovered that we can uh, progress a good bit further than that back to uh, some of the type meals that uh, we have on Earth. As a matter of fact, on this flight, we've carried along pieces of bread. And uh, along with the bread, we have uh, a uh, ham spread. And I'll show you, I hope, how easy it is to spread some ham. Uh, what we'll do, Charlie, tomorrow is go through and, and reconfigure our storage as closely as possible to uh, nominal. Some things that will not be nominal are as follows. The EVA visors were brought back into the command module, and we have not yet found a home for them. We'll uh, let you know where they go. In addition, there's about five pounds of miscellaneous weight from the limb in compartment Able 8. And it's taking the place of the LCGs, which we moved from A8 into the suit bag. We got rid of one uh, uh, miscellaneous trash bag, mostly old food wrapping, and also old underwear and that helmet protective visor of the CMPs. We left all that with Eagle, and those are about the only off nominals we have. Thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate it, Al. Roger. Apollo 11, Houston. We got the rates uh, looking uh, copacetic. You can go ahead and initiate PTC, Elmer. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, Buzz, uh, we're still not getting any data from your uh, EKG. It looks like the only way we're going to be able to get any is if at your convenience you would uh, take your, uh, uh, change out your EKG leads, uh, which are the center ones that are connected to the uh, blue uh, pin. And uh, there's a spare one in the medical uh, box over. Roger, how many do you want me to change? Just the center one. Uh, I'll get the right uh, nomenclature from the doc. Stand by. It's called a sternal EKG, which is the three center ones. And it's got, uh, they lead into a, uh, into the blue string lead ones, over. Okay, there are three of them, is that right? That's affirmative. And you want me to change all three? That's affirmative. Uh, they're all hooked together, 
uh, from the picture I'm looking at, then they go into the center uh, uh, belt uh, signal conditioner, and it's got the, the blue uh, strain relief on it. Yeah, well, I've checked the uh, connectors at both ends on that. Uh, I don't guess we have a spare signal conditioner or anything like that, do we? No, we do not. Well, I can uh, assure you my heart's still working. <laughs> yeah, we believe it. Charlie, uh, what we suggest here is uh, before we start that, uh, turn our two suit powers off and plug his uh, blue lead into my blue signal conditioner and see if uh, we can get his signal through my signal conditioner, okay? Roger, that's a good suggestion, Neil. We concur, over. Okay, Charlie, uh, we're transmitting, and uh, let's see if you get uh, any EKG signal on the uh, CDR at this point. Roger, stand by. Eleven, Houston, uh, we get uh, some data, but it's got the same problem that we had uh, through Buzz's signal conditioner, so apparently the lead is uh, broken, and uh, we'd like it uh, changed out if you could, over. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Apollo 11. Go ahead, sir. Roger, I think the problem was that the, uh, the center lead uh, had dried out. I'll go ahead and put uh, the uh, new one on and uh, see how that works, over. Roger. I can't tell you how good it feels to get it off. Yeah, I can imagine. Eleven. Get to the Apollo 11. Go ahead, 11, over. Roger, how are you reading the EKG now? Stand by, we'll let the doc look at it. Eleven, we're on uh, low bit right. We'll get you on a high game momentarily and we'll let you know then, over. Okay, I got my high gain antenna coming out. Roger, uh, just leave it on react, we'll get you. Houston, Buzz, uh, your EKG looks good. Now the uh, doc said thanks a lot. Okay, they're welcome. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, based on our tracking since the uh, mid-course, we showing a gamma of minus 6.57. This is preliminary, though, and we think that after some more tracking, it uh, should come on in, and we could tweak it right on into this quarter. We're just about in the center of the quarter, and everything's looking fine. We'll have you a entry pad in a couple hours before you go to sleep. And uh, from our friends in the public affairs, a few headlines. Other than uh, your flight, uh, you're still dominating the news. However, there are some... Uh, other things of interest for you. As I mentioned earlier, the All-Star game was rained out. It's going to be played tomorrow. However, uh, President Nixon will not be able to see it as he planned. We'll keep you posted on the results. 
And uh, also, the weatherman are going to be uh, good to you. Our forecast is, looks like it's holding good for the recovery area. It should be uh, real fine out there. President Nixon, as he prepares to fly out to greet your return, predicted that within 31 years, man will have visited at least one other planet bearing some form of life. In the year 2000, we on this Earth will have visited new worlds where there will be a form of life. He told 2,000 foreign exchange students at the White House. Before he left for his week-long trip, the President said Congress's proposal for organizing, reorganizing the Interstate Commerce Commission. He also conferred with Chairman Earl Wheeler of the Joint Chiefs of Staff on his return from Vietnam. And the launch of uh, Intelstat was scrubbed and has been rescheduled for 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Wednesday. Uh, the second stage fuel ground support system showed some contamination. And in, back in Washington, the House Ways and Means Committee agreed to tax changes affecting oil companies, banks, and utilities that could add nearly $2 billion a year to federal revenues. And also today, NASA, NASA announced that it will launch a large orbital workshop in 1972 with a cut-down version of the Saturn V. And your television pictures attracted a lot of interest. They were shown live throughout just about the whole world. And uh, But we're expecting uh, hundreds of uh, telephone calls from others all over the world complaining that their youngsters are trying to drink milk from spoons. Thanks to you, Mike. I take it all back. You need more practice. This is Apollo Control. Things are beginning to quieten down aboard Apollo 11 as they get near their sleep period. Probably won't be too many more exchanges between spacecraft communicator Charlie Duke here in Mission Control and the crew aboard Columbia. Entry countdown clock now showing 37 hours, 53 minutes. This may be refined a few times between now and splash time or entry. Apollo 11 now is uh, 153,080 nautical miles out from Earth, approaching at 4,373 feet per second. And at 157 hours 10 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Control, 158 hours, one minute ground elapsed time. There's been a certain amount of conversation between Charlie Duke here in Mission Control and the crew of Apollo 11. We'll play back the accumulated tape at this time and then uh, rejoin the conversation when it does resume on a live basis. Let's roll the tape now. Hello, Apollo 11, Houston. Buzz, you brought the surgeon right out of his chair. We see you exercising over. Thank you. Exercise in that correct, Buzz? Yeah, that's right, Buzz. All right, uh, we got his heartbeat way up. No, he started out of shape. Yeah, that's what we thought. Mike, you just really got a busy one tonight, don't you, right? Say again, Mike, over. That old white team's really got a busy one tonight, huh? Oh, boy, we're really uh, booming along here with all this activity. Can uh, barely believe it. What are you doing, sitting around your feet up on the console drinking coffee? <laughs> you must have your X-ray eyes up. You sure can see a long way. Yeah, we're watching you as well, you know. All right. Uh, 
Uh, if we got eight in the viewing room, and uh, let's see, about six in the trench right now. And this is a highlight of the day, uh, Buzz's exercise for the surgeon. Lemon, you copy over. Nice, Neil. Uh, the, the highest uh, heartbeat ever seen on a man's space flight. We just went low bid rate. The surgeon is about to die. <laughs>
Apollo 11 Houston. I'm just reading some of the uh, transcripts of uh, earlier today about uh, this earlier PTC that we attempted and uh, when you uh, keyed in the verb 24 and uh, did the two enters, it uh, took off on you. I think we got a story on that if you'd uh, like to listen to why it had such a high rate, uh, Mike, over. Okay, uh, I think it'd be better if you if you got your checklist out on 9-7 and we could uh, walk you through it, and that way I could probably get the story straight, over. Yeah, I got it. Okay, uh, Mike, what happened is, uh, you know, you were sitting there mo monitoring uh, verb 16, now 20, and at step 7 you went into verb 24, now 01, and uh, keyed in uh, the... the uh, the address and then information, information, and on the final enter of that 35400 enter, right after that, uh, it that then puts you back into the 16 noun 20. Then when you did the verb 24 enter, you were really entering the information in the actual CDUs. And when you got uh, the uh, two entries in in register one and two, it was an it was an instantaneous change in the actual CDUs. And the combat looked at that and saw, an, saw what it thought it had. My, my gosh, I got a 600-degree uh, per second rate. And it turns on the jets to try to take that rate out. And the rate filters that it's looking at, it well, the rate it's looking at is filtered. So uh, it doesn't really sense the actual rate until the thing is already built up. And then it, it starts reading the rate filters. And it says, well, I really didn't have 600 degrees, so then it turns it off and tries to slow it down. But until that happens, and it's some time lag, and that's why the rate was building up. The jets were on, and they were going to stay on due to that instantaneous 600 de suspected 600 degree per second rate. Over. Okay, I got you. Right. Hey, Charlie, you saying that uh, for a short period of time uh, he actually loaded uh, now 20 with uh, some value other than what's being read by the uh, CDU? Uh, I think I got that, Buzz. Uh, that's affirmative. But when he did that second verse 24, uh, you were the noun was 20. So when he did the 3175 and then the 002 enter, he, what he actually did there was load the first two uh, actual CDU locations. And the... Uh, computer looked at it, the DAP looked at it as an instantaneous uh, change in the actual CDU. Stand by on your comments, we're switching the antenna, it's very scratchy. Houston, we got you back now on a high gain. Uh, did you copy all that buzz over? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, uh, I thought the engine at 920 was one of those that uh, you could never load uh, from the disky. Uh, and that still may be, uh, maybe it was loaded just for a short period of time, and then when the uh, counters read the uh, the uh, gimbal angles where they changed it back to what they actually are, but in the meantime, the depth saw this uh, different number. Is that right? Well, I got it, uh, guys. It's telling me that you can actually load those uh, ACDUs, uh, the actual CDUs, but uh, we'll, we're checking on that. Over. Okay. Levin Houston, a buzz the word from the back room is that you can actually load the uh, noun 20, but you should not. Yeah, I got that. Thank you. You're welcome. Apollo 11, Houston, we got a recommendation for you on your uh, storage of the LIM EVVAs, over. Go ahead. Okay, 
uh, we'd like the uh, span guys to uh, say it looks, they think that one would go on the uh, helmet that you're going to have in uh, B1, and you could put the other one on uh, Mike's helmet, which will be in the sleep restraint. Over. Uh, it does a little bit on that one in B1. Uh, the other one might uh, might go in the sleep restraint. Uh, we've got them in their uh, helmet bags, and uh, I guess I mean I can keep the uh, helmets in the helmet bag. Or the levers in the lever bag. Roger. Yeah, we're thinking maybe they ought to stay uh, sealed up. Okay, we they won't act me on uh, Charlie with it with a cover. I tried it already. Okay, fine. We weren't sure of that. Uh, just a suggestion. We thought we'd uh, that you could check it out. Sound like you've already done that. So uh, I guess uh, whatever you can come up with, just let us know. Over. Okay, it's no problem. We'll let you know where they end up. Right. This is Apollo Control. We've had no communications with Apollo 11 in the last several minutes. So at this time, 158 hours, 45 minutes ground elapsed time, we will take down the circuit and come back up when and if conversation resumes prior to the time the crew starts their rest period, which uh, tonight is scheduled for 10 hours. 158 hours, 46 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. This is Apollo Control, 159 hours, 49 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 11 crew is uh, giving their final report prior to their starting their 10-hour rest period. We've got a little accumulation of tape, then we'll join live. Let's roll the tape now. Hello, Houston, Apollo 11. Go ahead, 11, over. Okay, crew status report. Radiation, CDR, 11020, CMP. 10022 LMP 09024 No medication. Roger, copy. And uh, Neil, we got uh, we'd like your onboard readouts of uh, batteries and uh, uh, RCS over.
down 69. All four lines are in A. Picking up with D0. Zero. Four, zero, zero. Zero, two, zero, niner. RET of blackout. Zero, zero, one, seven. Zero, three, three, eight. Zero, eight, two, zero. Sexton star. Zero, two, zero, niner. Four five one four niner. Foresight star is score by theta. At score by theta. Up three one five. Right three five. Left vector up. In the comments, this entry pad assumes no mid course. Six. And for your information, uh, looking at it right now, based on all the tracking we got, uh, that maneuver would only be a tenth of a foot per second, so we'll probably skip it. We'll let you know more about that later. Okay, your horizon check at EI minus 30 minutes, GET of 1904-3303. Gives you a pitch angle of two nine or eight. Okay, the uh, GDC, uh, you back up a line, uh, you set stars for the entry rest mat are Denim and Vega, zero seven nine or two three four three four zero. Standing by for your read back, over. Uh, Roger, motor entry, MPL, 35 Diner, 152, 001, 194-46-03. Two six seven plus one one zero two minus one seven two zero three zero six eight three six one nine four six five six one one eight nine or four three six two seven five one nine five zero three zero three Zero zero two seven four N A four zero 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 two zero nine zero zero one seven zero three three eight zero eight two zero zero two zero nine or four five one four nine or score five theta up three one five right Three five up. Assume snow NCC six. Arrive at DI minus thirty one nine four three three zero three at fifty two nine eight. Set stars and a Vega zero seven nine two three four three four zero. Over. Roger, very good read back, Buzz. And for your communication set up for tonight's sleep. We like Omni to Omni. Stand by. <laughs> Apollo 11, Houston. If uh, you didn't copy that buzz, it was a good read back on the pad. Uh, we've got a uh, clock update for you that we'll have to you as soon as we get it out to the site. It's uh, We're in the process of handing over to Honeysuckle. It'll be a couple of minutes over. Okay, is that the computer clock? Uh, we'll call you. You can uh, stay blocked right now. We'll give you a call. Hello, 
Apollo 11, Houston, would you please uh, give us to an extent so we got a uh, clock update for you? at this time uh, should be getting ready to uh, start their 10-hour rest period after having been tucked in by spacecraft communicator Charlie Duke here in Mission Control. At 160 hours, 10 minutes around the lapse time, this is Apollo Control.
spacecraft weight 26,000 pounds. Flight director Glenn Lenny has just completed a status check with all of the flight controllers here. We've gotten very good reports from all of them. The retrofire officer reports that on the present trajectory, Columbia's entry angle is minus 6.56 degrees. The nominal entry angle is minus 6.51 degrees. Retro expects uh, entry velocity to be 36,194 feet per second. He calls these entry conditions excellent. Flight Dynamics Officer says the tracking is looking very good. Guidance Navigation and Control Officer reports the passive thermal control uh, stable, operating very well. The reaction control system looking very good. ECOM, the Electrical, Environmental, and Communications Officer, reports uh, cryogenics well balanced. The environmental control system uh, looking good. All of the antennas and the power status in good shape. And the flight surgeon reports the crew sleeping soundly. Uh, his data indicates all three crewmen were asleep by 160 hours, 42 minutes. And he reports they've taken no medication. And recovery uh, reports the weather looks very good in the recovery area. And all uh, conditions there ready for a successful recovery. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 163 hours 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 135,920 nautical miles from Earth. Velocity 4,758 feet per second. Crew's been asleep almost three hours now. All systems still performing well. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 164 hours 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 133,131 nautical miles from Earth approaching at a velocity of 4,827 feet per second. Crew is asleep. Performance of all systems continues to be normal. We're 30 hours, 34 minutes, 37 seconds away from entry of Apollo 11 into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 165 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 130,306 nautical miles from the Earth. Velocity 4,900 feet per second. Crew is still asleep, and all systems are still performing well. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 166 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 127,431 nautical miles from the Earth. Velocity 4,975 feet per second. Crew still sleeping. All systems still normal. The Weather Bureau's Space Flight Meteorology Group reported today that 
Weather conditions for the landing of Apollo 11 tomorrow are expected to be acceptable. Some showers have been reported near the landing area, but these are expected to move westward, leaving the recovery area with partly cloudy skies. East northeasterly winds 10 to 15 knots and 4 foot seas. Although tropical storms will not affect weather in the landing area, the Apollo 11 crew should get a good view of the tropical storm Viola, located in the western North Pacific, and also the remains of tropical storm Claudia, located southeast of Hawaii. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 167 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 124,520 nautical miles from the Earth, approaching at a velocity of 5,055 feet per second. All still going well aboard Apollo 11, maintaining a stable passive thermal control mode, nose pointed toward the Earth, rotating three revolutions per hour. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 168 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11's distance from the Earth is 121,550 nautical miles. Velocity, 5,138 feet per second. All systems still performing well. The crew still asleep. The clock here in the control center shows 26 hours, 34 minutes, 37 seconds until uh, entry into the Earth's atmosphere. This is Mission Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 169 hours, 28 minutes. Apollo 11 is 118,542 nautical miles from Earth approaching at a velocity of 5,225 feet per second. Crew is still asleep. Performance of all systems continues to be normal. Mid-course correction number six, which was scheduled for an elapsed time of 172 hours, has been canceled. The trajectory is such that it will not be required. From the Manned Space Flight Network, we have a report of a contribution to the Apollo 11 mission from a 10-year-old boy in Guam. The uh, Guam tracking station is receiving telemetry uh, from this mission. Had a problem with one of its antennas, a bearing. The bearing uh, was replaced with the assistance of a 10-year-old boy named Greg Force, who had an arm small enough that he could work through a two-and-a-half-inch diameter hole to uh, pack the new bearing. We're now showing uh, entry, interface with the Earth's atmosphere, 25 hours, 33 minutes, 30 seconds from now. And the green team of flight controllers led by Cliff Charlesworth is now uh, taking over from Glenn Lenny and his black team of flight controllers. This is Mission Control Houston. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 28 minutes. The flight surgeon reports that all three crew members uh, apparently are still sleeping, and there are uh, no immediate plans to awaken them at this time. Uh, Apollo 11 is presently 115,470 nautical miles from the Earth, and the speed is up to 5,317 feet per second. Uh, in about 
four hours at uh, 174 hours, 24 minutes. Ground elapsed time, uh, Apollo 11 will be, in terms of distance, halfway home. At that point, it will be 102,888 nautical miles from the moon and 102,888 nautical miles from the Earth. All systems on the spacecraft continue to function normally at this time. Uh, the spacecraft weight is almost an even 26,000 pounds. At uh, 170 hours, 29 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 170 hours, 54 minutes. The uh, flight surgeon reported a few minutes ago that uh, telemetry data now indicates all three crewmen are awake after uh, about 10 hours of rest. We expect we will be hearing from them shortly. Apollo 11 at this time is 114,146 nautical miles from the Earth and the spacecraft velocity is 5,359 feet per second. A press conference with the principal, principal investigators for uh, lunar samples is scheduled to begin uh, in about uh, four or five minutes. And during that press conference, we will tape record any conversations with the crew and play them back following. At uh, 170 hours, 55 minutes, this is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 172 hours, 20 minutes. During the uh, press conference, we established contact with the crew. Uh, capsule communicator Owen Garriott put in a call at 171 hours about uh, 10 minutes after the surgeon reported biomedical data showed all three crewmen awake. Uh, Neil Armstrong responded, uh, we have received a status report from the crew. We also passed up uh, the information, preliminary information that they will use in the re-entry tomorrow and uh, gave them a weather report for the prime recovery area in the Pacific uh, landing zone. I will play back about uh, 12 minutes of taped conversation that we've accumulated to date and uh, then stand by for any further live comments uh, from the spacecraft. Adam, yet over. Power up, at least, though. Eyeball on my uh, measurement staff. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, got your signals loud and clear here. Uh, how are things this morning? Over. We'd like to do it on our mark from the ground. 
the uh, PTC is a little bit ragged, and we would like to uh, make the water dump at a time which we think will hold it in its uh, proper uh, uh, configuration. So uh, it looks like we'll uh, have a desirable opportunity coming along in uh, between 15 and 20 minutes. And uh, on our mark, uh, we would like to have a wastewater dump uh, down to uh, about 40%. I'll give you a more accurate uh, uh, level uh, for the water dump a little later. Over. Stand by just a moment here till we get out of the uh, known position on the antenna. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, we're over on uh, Omni Delta now. I think we can read you better. Did you get all those uh, first three items on your flight plan update? Over. I got the course correction. I uh, can throw battery B charge and. Uh, uh, water dump, uh, on your, uh, call, over. Uh, that's right, Buzz, and, uh, last item here, uh, we do request that, uh, we do a P-52, uh, even, uh, though we're not doing the mid-course correction, and, uh, we'll, uh, suggest you get to that after the, uh, waste water dump has been complete. Uh, we also have a state vector update for you, if you can, uh, give us a poo and a clip, over. Okay, you have the disc, you know. Uh, Roger, uh, we'll be uh, sending that up, and uh, I'll give you your consumables update now. Uh, it's uh, for a time of 170 hours. Okay. Uh, your RCS total is a minus 3.5%. Alpha is minus 14.5. Bravo plus 7. Charlie minus 4.5. Delta minus 3. Hydrogen total is minus one, and your oxygen total is plus a two four. Over. Roger, copy those. And onboard readout uh, D is uh, sixty nine. C is seventy three. D is. Uh, let me uh, start over again. Okay, A is 51, and B is 62, C is 63, and D is 59. Over. Uh, Roger, 11. Uh, copy those, and uh, we've uh, checked an error on the ground also. Uh, one correction to my last transmission. Uh, we would like that P-52 uh, prior to the uh, waste water dump. Uh, which is uh, coming up in about uh, 30 minutes from now. Uh, will that uh, be possible? Over. Oh, yeah, we'll take care of that. Roger. And uh, if you're ready for an entry pad, I'll read that up to you now also, 11. Ready to copy. Okay, entry pad is uh, area mid-pack. 359er, 153. Zero zero one one nine or four four six zero three two six seven plus one one zero two minus one seven two zero three zero six seven three six one nine or four six five five one one eight seven five three six two seven five one nine or five zero three zero three zero zero two eight DL and VL all four are not applicable D zero four zero 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 two one zero 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 one eight zero three three eight zero eight two one four four two nine or three two three eight zero four side star is Scorpio Theta up 
314. Right. 34. Lift vector up. Comments. Entry data assumes no mid course maneuvers. Your Earth entry minus 30 minute horizon check. 19 or 4 plus 33 plus 03. Your pitch is 29 or 7. This assumes an entry rest mat. Your GDC aligned stars are Deneb and Vega. Roll pitch yaw 078 233 340. Read back over. Roger, uh, mid back uh, entry pad uh, 359er 
in uh, Houston. Uh, Roger, those uh, got them all. Apollo 11, uh, Houston, we're ready to start your uh, wastewater dump at this time. Over. Roger, dumping. Houston, uh, we Houston, show you. Apollo 11, we've dumped to 45 percent. They're stopping now. Do you concur? Uh, Roger 11, we concur. Weather for the uh, recovery area. Anytime uh, you'd like to hear about it. Over. Go ahead. Uh, 11, uh, Houston. Uh, present forecast uh, shows acceptable conditions in your recovery area. Uh, 2,000 foot scattered. High scattered. A uh, wind from uh, zero seven zero degrees, a uh, one three knot. Visibility at ten miles, and uh, sea state about uh, four feet. Uh, the uh, forecast uh, yesterday showed a, a tropical storm, Claudia, uh, some five hundred to a thousand miles east of Hawaii. Uh, the uh, the uh, pictures from. Uh, Earth satellites uh, taken yesterday afternoon, afternoon uh, showed uh, Claudia dissipating, so uh, this appears to be even uh, less a factor than it was before. Uh, your uh, recovery area is now uh, believed to be just a little ways north of the uh, intertropical convergence zone, uh, which you can probably see uh, when you uh, uh, look out your uh, windows there. Uh, well, yesterday there was also a report of a tropical storm, Viola, uh, further uh, to the west, uh, its present location is uh, some 1,000 uh, miles uh, east of the Philippines and uh, moving northwest. Uh, tropical storm uh, Viola has been intensifying and uh, should uh, be uh, transferred to the typhoon category within the next uh, 12 hours or so. However, that will be uh, far to your uh, west. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Sunrise Terminator has not yet reached Viola. When it does, uh, Several hours from now, you can uh, probably uh, distinguish it uh, uh, from your viewpoint uh, quite readily. Uh, as a matter of fact, it uh, should be uh, of interest to, to uh, perhaps take some pictures, uh, comment upon it uh, when you uh, do get a chance to see Viola in a few uh, few hours. So uh, that's about the uh, present uh, weather state and uh, situation for your recovery area. Over. Okay, sounds pretty good. Apollo 11, Houston, over. Go right ahead, Houston. Uh, 11, Houston, uh, we'd like to uh, try an uh, operation on the with the uh, high gain array here. Uh, if you would uh, select uh, reacquire and your uh, S band antenna to high gain, your uh, positions are pitch plus 4-0. And... Apollo 11, this is Houston, over. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, would you ask Buzz to check his biomedical TM sensors? 